Looking glass. I wake in my mother's house. The green clock flashes in the lower left corner of my vision, so I know that I'm awake. Still, it feels unreal. I expect to see my eyeballs red clock at any moment, or the amber. This has the haziness of a dream, or artisan VR. I pinch my wrist, feel the sting. Why am I here? Yes, I remember. I'm staying with Mum the day before the demonstration. A real demo, not one of those gatherings of net trolls. There are infeasibly huge placards pulsing with neon slogans. This is an old school protest, a manifestation of actual bodies on the ground. We're traveling down to zone one together on the old HS2 line. There will be Metpol riot officers, possibly soldiers too, but there will be cameras. Our anger will be broadcast onto your retinas around the world. I swing my legs clumsily from the bed, my head still foggy. I flick my eyes for the time, top left. Ivor tells me it's 8.43 a.m. Late for me. My left eyeball feels weird, a dull throb in the socket. Maybe that explains the haziness. Probably a migraine forming offshore. God, I hope it's not a tumour. When I walk downstairs, Mum is already in the kitchen, the smell of eggs and bacon in the air. I'm unusually hungry, my stomach vacant and gurgling. She has no idea how good it feels to be in a house again, instead of my zone four habitat pod, to be eating actual food, not reconstituted proteins. I sit on a stool as she turns around and smiles. Well, good morning, sleepyhead, she says. Feeling better? I nod, feel the throb behind my eyeball, then revise it to a shrug. I feel strange, I say. Maybe it's the anticipation. She smiles that mum smile, turns her back to me as the eggs hiss and spit on the convection plate. I rub the heel of my palm into my eye socket, but it makes little difference. I guess the headache is here to stay. Are you all ready for tomorrow, she asks, her back still turned. You know the routine, right? You have a mask with you. I do. A rubber Che Guevara mask that I picked up on Emart for an extortionate price. At the time, I thought it was cute, but now I'm not so sure. It seems inappropriate to wear expensive novelty goods to a protest march. Has there been anything on the news yet, I ask? Metpol have already issued warnings about the online chatter, the rising surge of discontent. They know we're coming, but they don't know the numbers. They're not prepared for an on-the-ground protest of this kind anymore. The cyber division eats its way through most of their budget. Nothing new. She turns to face me again. Are you sure you're OK, sweetie? You look awfully pale. You don't have to come, you know. You won't be letting anybody down if you're not up to it. I attempt to smile. I'll be fine. We both made promises, Mum, to Stanhope and the others. They need us there. The government has to see that we want change, that we're not backing down. She looks at me strangely, her head tipped to one side. Stanhope? Yes, Mum, Mark. Mark Stanhope, Reva 57. Felicity, Kevin, Broad, Styles, all of them. They're depending on us. This has to go down the way we planned. Without warning, my vision fizzes and dissolves. My first thought is that there's something wrong with my eyeball unit. Everything looks gray and flat. I raise my hand in front of my face, and I realize that I'm only seeing out of one eye. The left one has a cable trailing from the socket where somebody has removed the eyeball to hack directly into the implant. A quick glance, bottom left. Green clock. Ivor thinks this is real. Even though I know not to trust it now, I know that it's right. When I try to stand, I find my legs are strapped to a chair, the chair bolted to a concrete floor. Now that I'm used to the twilight, I see a featureless room, an empty light socket dangling from the ceiling. There are dark stains on the floor, too many to count. My eye flicks top left, 11.43 a.m., the day of the demonstration. They'll be on their way now, putting themselves in position for the rendezvous at two. They'll be traveling on foot, by train, by bike, none of them realizing that their plot is in the open, that the authorities will be waiting. I see a movement in the corner of the room, a short gray man in a shirt and tie, a Metpol ID badge stuck to his chest. He stands steps forward. He looks at me, bored, and after a moment his eyes flick up and right, down, twice to the left. 
then everything goes dark. Thank you. <laughs>